Oh, I almost want to come in again just for that reaction. Oh my God, thank you so much. Oh my goodness, it's so wonderful to see you all in three dimensions. That's so exciting. Hello and welcome to Gotland Game Conference 2022. Super exciting to be here. I hope you're as thrilled as I am because I am really quite thrilled. Oh. <laughs> no, it has been a wonderful weekend. It has been so exciting. My name is Josephine Baird. Uh, I'm a lecturer here at the game design department where I teach about game design. Um, and I joined the faculty right in the middle of the pandemic, which means that I kind of only saw all of you in two dimensions, like on a flat screen, uh, which is very exciting because uh, it meant that I could only assume about this much of you actually exists. Uh, sort of like from here upwards, right? I mean, the, every now and again, I just started, started to feel a bit strange. Like, am I actually talking to people, or is this some sort of amazing new artificial intelligence that's sort of just screwing with me and I'm trying to learn how to like, deal with now? No, no, you're actually real people. Here you all are. It is very exciting. And one of the most exciting things is when you're meeting people that you've only seen in two dimensions on a 16 by 9 screen, is that you learn that there are different heights than you imagined. <laughs> Have you noticed that? It's just really strange. Like, I've met all of you, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, hi. <laughs> there you are. Or, oh, hello, there you are. <laughs> Didn't see you there. Uh, but as you can see, I am, in fact, this height. I do have lower extremities. Very exciting. Except for I'm not really this height. Uh, I have been uh, enhanced. <laughs> right? Oh. <laughs> I, I'm now being smoke enhanced, which is like I'm being smoked, cured, if you will, like a ham. <clears throat> anyway, uh, <laughs> yes, no, so I'm this height, I feel very excited, except for I'm also a tiny little bit nervous. This is my first time hosting the Gotland Game Conference, and you're all really, really fabulous, but I'm a little bit shy, and so actually what I felt like I would do 
um, for all you role players out there, you know that sometimes, yeah, sometimes what you need to do is inhabit a role. Inhabit a role that can do things that you can't, right? You play a game, whether it's a video game, or if you're playing a LARP or a tabletop role-playing game, you can do things when you're inhabiting a role that you can't do otherwise. And for me, that means I need to find for tonight. And I did this. I thought, what role could I take that has the correct amount of confidence, self-assuredness, gravitas, if you will, height, um, and so I landed on Lady Dimitrescu from Resident Evil Village. And I just decided that, yes, for tonight, I will have that gravitas. And it, it, ooh. Uh, I, I thought to, uh, to, get, to get it right. Uh. So... So when you see me, think of these five things. <laughs> now, yes, I'm confident, I'm really tall, I have gravitas, I might or might not have giant razor fingers, yes, and I have an English-ish accent. Well, now that I've introduced myself with the proper gravitas and with the proper height, P.S., by the way, anybody who's going to be designing games next year, um, it occurred to me that having heels like this don't exactly make one, you know, I was thinking about the flipper game, <laughs> and it occurred to me, like, I want to go try, this isn't going to work, is it? So I was hoping that maybe next year I could inspire someone to come up with some sort of fabulous uh, input device that could involve heels, just for me. Would you mind? Terribly. Thank you very much. Oh. oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness. It's so exciting to be here. Uh, and it's really, really a thrill to be able to uh, not only um, invite the students who've done amazing work and shared their games here, but it's also a real pleasure to be able to invite the jury members who have been deliberating, looking at these games, and trying to make extremely difficult decisions as to who to give these awards to. Uh, I was privy to those decisions. Um, now, I'm not saying that there wasn't any violence, but blood wasn't shed too much. All right, but our first category, and I'm very excited to introduce this, it's about best game feel. Now, what is best game feel? Well, let's look at the words, best game feel. That's sort of ephemera, really. When we're playing games, that wonderful sensation, that affect that you get from a playing a game that seems to just gel and give that sensation of moving through space, of doing the things that are impossible, and being able to express things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to. And in order to give this award, I'd like to welcome onto stage the fabulous Daniel Gustafsson. Please come and join me. Thank you, sir. Wow. What a weekend. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let me just unlock my phone. <laughs> so, the nominees for best game feel are Hugway. Four Flipper Forest, Rug Racers, and Memories of Misery. You excited? Yeah. Me too. There are many ways a game can make us feel. Excited, competitive, spellbound, or scared. And honestly, there's been a lot of feelings for all of us these few days. And I want to thank every single one of you for that. It's been amazing. So really, thank you. Why not? But there's this one game 
It delivered something extra. It provided an experience that embraced everyone in different ways and challenged the player in game and out. But it wasn't only your experience that mattered because you were not alone. Someone else was always there with you. You just couldn't see them. So, the winner of Best Game Feel 2022 is... <laughs> Memories of Mystery! Um, I want to say uh, thank you uh, to all our classmates that helped us throughout this process, test our game and uh, polish the game feel and uh, balance for the puzzles. It really meant, meant a lot. Um, also, thank you, Nikita, for doing the voice acting for us. Um, it really means a lot. Um, yeah, uh, and thank you to the teachers for allowing us to do such a massively scoped project that could have ended really badly. Thank you very much. Oh my goodness, that makes me happy, giving people awards, and particularly that game. I've been following them around a little bit, in a kind of not trying to be creepy way, because their game is super creepy, and I highly uh, encourage you to have played it if you haven't already. So thank you again, and a huge round of applause for our winners. Ah, oh, wonderful. Okay, I did something weird just then. I realized I'd stepped behind the flower arrangement, and I realized that even with this hat, it's not going to happen, is it? So, okay, well, I'll just be here. Moving on directly to our next category, best level design. Now, what is a level? We level up in lots of different ways. We have a level in which we experience our game space. This is a category that tries to envelop all of those aspects of level design, and it is a way that we try to um, demonstrate the excellence that you have been showing us in all of your wonderful games in your level design. And I'd like to welcome up onto stage to give this particular award, Eric Osana. Please come and join us. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh boy, man, went too fast. <laughs> Jesus. So I remember for like, fi like five years ago, I was sitting there as you all guys do, and I felt so nervous. Like, oh, are we going to get up? And I was kind of fun that I'm standing here and I feel the same, the same way. So, <laughs> But no, don't worry, because I really have to say that the level or like the bar that you guys have put up for this year is incredible. Like, I was not expecting 44 games to be this good. Like, it's really, really good. And it's kind of, so I say props for that, because you really smashed it. <laughs> That's one thing. Really, really, hey, hey! <laughs> and then also, before we continue with awards, I also want to say that thank you, because when I got to play your games, and actually try to figure out the core mechanics, or what kind of core mechanics you wanted to do, and really see what kind of do, game you really wanted to make, and then after, like, have some bra brain, Oh, what do you call it, Brain, brainstorm session with you. I had so much fun, really. I had so much fun, so I really want to say thank you for giving that experience for me, to me. <laughs> really, thanks for that. 
I really appreciate it. But anyway, let's continue with the nominees for level design. If you can dig it. And the first one is for Flippy Froze Forest. Uh, falls, falls, succeed. And then Walking Home Studios. And then Dream Connect. Oh, geez, I can't see anything with the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so about level design. So what I see, like good level design, I think is when the designer can, can manipulate the player without really directly uh, telling them what to do through text or symbols. So it's more using the tools to actually force play to do, to play the way the designer wants the player to play, play the game. Uh, and I've seen that a lot of you actually kind of did that with your games, but one game really nailed it. Uh, and with that said, though, <laughs> come up here! Give me a big hug! I'm a bit too shy to say anything except for like, thank you, I suppose. Too quick, too quick, I was doing things. <laughs> Personal things. <laughs> That's that thing where you just go, oh yes. <laughs> the, the hat. Well, I had to lose the hat because I was doing things. Okay? All right. <laughs> we'll tell that story afterwards. Um, that was very quick, so I was rushing. The next category is one of my particular favorites. They all really are. I shouldn't, you know, they're like children. You can't tell me your favorite, but you have one. And one of them is this. <laughs> the one beautiful thing about game design is its creativity. You the students, the designers who have been sharing us your beautiful games, your beautiful designs, have shown incredible creativity and taken this art form to different levels of design. And innovation has been a key theme of this year's beautiful game conference. And it's been an absolute delight to see that. And so it is my absolute delight to be able to welcome Alan Turner onto the stage to give out the award for best innovation. Oh. I'm back. <laughs> Innovation is one of those things that if you ask a hundred different people what it means, you're going to get a hundred different answers. Um, I just want to say, you mentioned favorites earlier. There are a number of times the students came to me over the course of the weekend and they looked at me, they sat down with me and asked me if I had a favorite game. And I summoned up all the love I could muster and looked you right in the eye and I fucking lied. <laughs> <laughs> and I said no. <clears throat> Only half lied. Um, the, the, the truth is like, there is so much wonderful stuff. I was just overwhelmed with what, what's going on there. But there are some games that stood out in, in terms of innovation and, 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 and finding ways to engage us in new and different ways. So without any further ado, let's take a look at the nominees. Shake Back to Life. Walking Home Studio. Blind Sight. And Memories of Misery. And so when I think about all of the innovative games I saw, and there are so many, there's one in particular that stood out because the innovation found ways to engage me with character, engage me with self, and create space 
where no matter what I was doing on the screen, I was still in a space of really wonderful play. I felt the play through my whole body, and it was the only game that made me want to shimmy. So without any further ado, the winner is... <laughs> Come on down. Thank you so much. I think everyone in our team will agree that one and only thing we wanted to do is for people to have fun with our game and laugh while playing our game. And turns out we nailed it. <laughs> And yes, they most certainly did nail it. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, wonderful. And thank you, Alan. I saw you fly off. I don't know where you went, but... Oh, you're there, darling. Hello. Oh, the hat came back. And there's a whole story about this hat, uh, but I'm not going to tell it now. Instead, I'm going to talk to you about the best storytelling award that we're going to give away tonight. Storytelling and narrative is a big function of game design, of course, in, in many, many, many different ways and narratives. What's been so wonderful is to see narrative and storytelling being told in verbal, nonverbal, physical, and all the myriad ways that you've discovered and shown us this weekend. It's an absolute pleasure to welcome onto the stage Ana Laura Martinez to give this to you. Thank you very much. Well, hello everybody. It's so nice to be back here and I just want to say thank you all for your amazing games. Honestly, I'm so proud of all of you. <laughs> well, I just want to say that every single one of these nominees has captivated us. They have enthralled us with their storytelling. And please, the nominees. Corbin's Journal, <laughs> Memories of Misery, It Has Been Three Months, and Hot Wave. <laughs> well, good narrative draws us in. It makes us care about the characters that we're looking at, and in return, it makes us feel things, you know? So, I just want to say that all of these themes have crafted with immense attention to detail um, the game design, art, and the writing all together into an incredible and beautiful story. So by looking back at previous groundbreaking games, the winner of this award told stories in a new way. Don't put it yet. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Whatever. Come here, please. <laughs> I can't see anyone. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you, everyone. I mean, we're missing a team member, so um, if you watch this again, Lily, we wish you could have been here with us. She had to go back home, sadly. But yeah, thank you to everyone who played the game and who said super nice things. Thanks to all the staff. And uh, you all made such incredible games, so I wish I could have played them all.
Thank you. <laughs> don't, don't kill him. <laughs> I, I'm assured he's in one piece. <laughs> Which piece? Mm. <laughs> well, that was a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much, Anna. I know you're a little nervous, so it's wonderful. Speaking of presentation, let's talk about the best presentation. Do you see how I do these segues? They just come to me. It's in the hat, really. It's not in the brain. It just comes down from on high. Presentation at a conference is a particularly difficult and strange set of skills. It's not something that you're really taught to do, to be an artist and to also be able to present your work, to be able to share it with people and having them watch your babies, and then also to try and go, look how great it is, in all sorts of wild and wonderful ways. It has been a delight to see you all share your Way, uh, games in the ways that you have done. And it's also, again, an absolute delight to welcome onto the stage a jury member, Peace, who's going to be presenting Best Presentation. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, I'm a bit relieved. I, uh, I forgot the order which we were going to present the awards. I thought I was after Alan. And uh, I know, look at him. I mean, I would feel like Pippin walking next to Gandalf. <laughs> it's just, I'm glad. But um, before I say anything else, I would just like to take this moment to, um, I mean, faculty, anyone who presented their games, the jury, anyone who had anything to do with this event happening, good fucking job. Um, I specifically asked uh, to be presenting this award because the last time GGC was held in person, I was on this stage receiving the very same award and I thought it'd be meaningful to giving, give it away now, basically. Well, um, so to reach its fullest potential, the developers must pass their passion onto the presentation of their game. And uh, thankfully, we saw many who excelled on the show floor this year. Uh, some of which are, so, for the best presentation, the nominees. Robots in Battle. <laughs> Memories of Misery. Rug Racers. And Rolling Squared. Now, I can only assume that it is Rolling Squared. Right? It's not rolling two? Square, right? Okay. Good. So, um, well, each of these nominees, every single one of them, um, well, they've shown great care and commitment to their games, to their theme, and, well, they've shown great promise during the jury uh, deliberations as well. Each of them were humble, uh, recipient, that's a word I forgot. Receptive and uh, appreciative of the feedback, even when they had heard the same thing over and over again, the very same day. But there was one team um, which basically pulled the rug out from under all the others is... Well, rug racers! I can't see shit right now, <laughs> but I just guess that it's a lot of you. Uh, cool. <laughs> all right, we just, yeah, we just want to thank all of you, and uh, I'm glad that the jury liked our presentation, because I thought they hated us. <laughs> Thank you! 
shout out to Jerry. We made our game in a 3,000 line long main.cpp file. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. They're right, I cannot see shit up here. Because um, you do that thing where you go on stage and go, hey, hey, it's you, it's you. I see nothing. You could be a complete mass of humanity, all of you subsumed into one thing. Some sort of fabulous artistic creation. In fact, that's what we're going to talk about next. Art direction, the best thereof. There has been amazing art shown here this weekend. Beautiful, beautiful imagery, beautiful, beautiful game design, beautiful, interactable art, the unique quality of this particular medium and art. I'm very, very pleased to welcome onto stage Tim Hutchings for this award for Best Art Direction. There you are, darling. You're, you're all so polite. Uh, applauding for the person, no one knows who I am. I really... <laughs> But I'm here to give you things, so I guess that's, that's enough. I wrote notes down to make sure I did this right. Uh, last week, uh, before, the morning before I came here, I was working on opening film credits for a uh, movie uh, produced by one of the most important living animation directors. This was a dream I didn't know I ever had until I suddenly got roped into making this work. The year before that, uh, I was receiving design awards and art, and art awards for some of the games I've made. And in the years before that, I was working in award uh, Emmy-winning TV shows and showing my art in galleries around the world. And I, this is a long, convoluted way to say that I have, not, I have a broad idea of what art means and what art direction is, right? Uh, with that, can we see the uh, nominees, please? Robots in Battle, Hug Wave, Corbin's Journal, and Dream Connection. All right. When I came here, I'm from Bradley University in the United States, and I came here and I've been completely floored by uh, the stuff you people had on display. The Uppsala students are amazing, and if I could take what you have and put it in a jar and smuggle it back to the US, I would. And I, I, that's almost like not an empty threat. That's almost like someone should keep an eye on me. Uh, <laughs> so the journey struggled to select an art direction winner because uh, the work we saw was all fantastic. Uh, there was a sophistication to some of the work that was nearly professional. I mean, it's just incredible work all around. Um, the winner in particular that we chose had a graphical style that was distinct and punchy with a color sense to match. What? <laughs> One, one juror writes, the game delivers amazing attitude with every stroke of the brush, and that just puts it perfectly. Uh, the characters grabbed me in a way that surprised and alarmed me. I cared more about these characters by the, I, I went to see more of the characters after the tutorial, and I, I, I never care for that. Uh, but anyways, uh, the stylish, slick winner is... people that made this game and the event happen. Also, thank you to our office mates who listened to us jazzercise. <laughs> it was a lot of fun to put this together. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, wow. That was so fabulous. I love it. Group hugs on stage. That's what we want all around. 
Ah, oh, it's so wonderful to hear the applause and hear the joy in the room for these wonderful, wonderful games that we're celebrating this weekend. And I also want to talk about the beauty of sound, the beauty of um, audio design that we're going to be talking about next. There is something particularly unique about being able to tell your story, to create your worlds, not just visually, but through enveloping the player in sound and music, especially. It's been a particular favorite of mine seeing all the amazing original music that's been shared on the show floor this weekend, so very, very well done. And it is also my absolute pleasure uh, to welcome onto the stage to give this award to Joachim, sorry, Joachim Hueberg. Did I do it right? Thank you. So, party people, y'all feeling good? Yes, it is I, Joachim Mijenich. <laughs> Ten years ago, I was in this room for the first time in my life, and I was never a student here. I'm in the happy, happy, happy hangaround that's just been back here for so many times now. I swear to God, everyone in this place is so fucking cool, you guys. Absolute rock stars, you. Yes! Yes. This is a room full of people. I get to geek out about audio. The best, best, best time of the day, really. Let's have a look at our nominees for best audio design. Koda, Hugwave, Apartment 3, and Dream Connection. Pipe down. Yeah. So, game audio has really undergone a lot of stages of evolution since we first brought interactive entertainment into our lives. From the sound of hitting a virtual tennis ball, to building entire universes of sound in virtual reality. It has continued to really fulfill the worlds of all of our most cherished games. As game audio creators, I believe that our mission needs to be very clear to us, to guide, to enable, and to will the players to succeed. Sound functions to intent when it delivers on the promise already given by the game as a whole. And in doing so, it provides an answer to a question. And every single game on stage with me here tonight has managed to unlock this facet of design, providing audio experience that evoke emotion, a call us to action, and create a new experience that is larger than the sum of its individual parts. And all of your games have been better for it. So the winner of Best Audio Design is... It's Hogway, baby! Thank you. Uh, we really started small. Take this. <laughs> and we couldn't be happier that all that you that played the game came back to us to say very kind words and bring your friends to play as well. So thank you very much. And uh, also the art goes to shouting as well for working with the art and the music as well. Hug wave. I love you so much. Okay, there is something particularly, I have no influence on this game whatsoever, but I had a tiny, tiny, tiny 
part of their learning experience. Uh, it was my pleasure to have those particular designers in my class. I've had some of you in my class, and it is with tremendous pride that I was able to see your games on the show floor. It has been a very, very, very special feeling for me as a teacher. I think I can speak for many, 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 if not every single one of the faculty when we feel that way. It was beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> <sighs> It's me! <laughs> uh, okay, so this is a little odd. Uh, it turns out that I'm going to introduce myself. <clears throat> to come on stage is moi. I am going to be giving away the Public Choice Award, and that is a particularly favorite of mine, like all the others. Because this is the opportunity for us to reflect on the impact that we have on all of the players that we've been seeing this weekend. The Public Choice Award represents that um, voice from all of the players that have seen your games. Now, something that I noticed, and I was speaking to uh, one of our fellow the faculty members, another Josephine, uh, whose nickname is Sparkles. We have two Josephines. I'm precocious, if you want to know. I'm not sure you did, but you did, believe me. We were talking, and we noticed that we're, there was a particular theme that ran through some of the games, and that particular theme was a certain kind of wobble. I don't know what it was. It was just this sort of like fabulous jiggle that went through some of the games. And the recipient of this particular award is just such a game. So it is my pleasure to announce this year's Public Choice Award goes to... Not me. <laughs> Not them. Okay. Hello. First of all, I want to thank my amazing team members for making this happen and all of our peers and the faculty as well for making this experience really nice. Second of all, thank you to all of the Fortnite kids who played our game and loved it. <laughs> really appreciate it. And lastly, I want to say a special shout out to my sister who got married today that I missed for this. So thank you, everybody. Oh, that was wonderful, thank you. Did you notice how I fucked it up just now? <laughs> you did? No, did someone say no? I, I, I adore the fact that you're paying no attention. Well done. <laughs> we just had a chat back there. Are there any nominees for that? No, 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 it's just a winner. Just go ahead. Johan, we will. It's my fault, actually, for doing it. The next award is also presented by... Oh, look, it's me again, everyone. And now... Mm. An opportunity for redemption, watch me. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this award is given to the students by the students. This is the opportunity to have expressed your appreciation, your joy in each other's work. And that has been something that I have noticed throughout the weekend. It has been so much fun and such a pleasure seeing all of you enjoying each other's creativity, learning from each other, being inspired by each other. And that is very, very special. So I believe there are nominees for this award. Yes. <laughs> and they are. Here we go. Rug Racers. Coda. Hug wave and memories of misery. <laughs> Each of these are particular favorites of mine, like all of them, but the one that uh, received uh, perhaps the, the most of your fellow students' interest, delight, was a particularly 
copper tea affair. <laughs> so the winner is... Y'all really like carpets, huh? <laughs> uh, well, I want to thank all of you, and yeah, we want to thank all of you. And I mean, it, it was so many amazing games, and I, you all did so fucking good. And yeah, it's a good job. <laughs> yeah, I, now Uta is gonna say something. I want to say something. You want to say something? <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, also I want to thank Mohammed because uh, our music rocks and again, everybody did so good. I mean, I was kind of, I kind of sucked at my game, but you did really good though. I mean, <laughs> God damn. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, what a delight. That is so wonderful. And like I said, it's been an absolute pleasure watching you all enjoy each other's work. Really. <laughs> yes, I think the rug was very popular. See, the problem is they sat all the way at the back, which means that when you invite them there, they have to do this jog. So next time, if you're feeling like you're going to be lucky, to the front. All right. Speaking of students, it is not just a delight to be able to see the students who are here, especially for the first time. I was supervising bachelor students' third year project this year, and being a new staff member, and a little bit sometimes not the brightest person, I was saying to my students, oh, it's going to be wonderful to go back to GDC, isn't it? Because, you know, it's been cancelled recently. And they said to me, it's the first time we've been able to go. I know, it's genuinely sad, but I'm really, really pleased they're here. And what I really hope that they will do, all of you, is come back because it's not just about going out into the world, it is about doing your work there, creating your art there, and then coming back and being celebrated once again. And it's so wonderful to see so many of you that's done that. But we are going to note a particular person this year, and the person who's gonna do that for us is a faculty member, and I would count as a friend, I hope. Uh, Jakob B. Robert, <laughs> come here and give him a hand. There's Great. only Great. one, and they're very special. Hello, GGC, and our dear department. Um, so this year's Alumni of the Year uh, had a time of study characterized by a clear and rocket ship-like trajectory. And to an extent, this aim continued to characterize their career, um, not least from their LinkedIn page, which is plastered with, with praise. Um, they've been writing me, asking to help us out, making better designers when he's frustrated with his juniors not knowing proper documentation techniques. <laughs> he's been helping out the department at, at several points. Um, for example, coming here as a juror. Um, also as an advisory board member for an advisory board designed to integrate us more into the academic traditions of Uppsala University, um, where his straightforwardness and honesty gave the perhaps more diplomatic and conservative board members the hiccups. Um, I'm even a bit fanboyish in, in being able to give out this award and honored, since he's also been designing some of my favorite games. And with that, the alumni of the year is Aydin Natsud. I am like you.
is of course you get a hug. Should I say something? Yes, please. Thank you. I was not prepared for this. Yeah, they're right. Like, you can't see shit. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, I think it was 30, 13 years ago I was here. It wasn't even called uh, Uppsala University back then. It was called uh, something else. <laughs> and uh, back in my days, you know, bananas cost half a cent. We didn't have any game engines. We had sticks and shoelaces. And there wasn't even a boat. We had to swim here. <laughs> no, but really, uh, thank you very much. And also, thank you, Jakob, because I know that when I got my first job, Bethesda called you and said, is this a good, is this a good guy? And you said yes. So thank you very much, Jakob. And also, <laughs> yes. Also, I want to thank Teddy, of course, because he's been coaching me in how to do acceptance speeches. Uh, you know, as soon as I stepped in, he was like, hey, <laughs> do, you, do you want some uh, advice on acceptance speeches? I was like, what are you talking about? But now I know. <laughs> thank you. Wonderful. Yes, we're nothing if not subtle. Like I say, we're going to invite you to come closer. And hey, have you practiced your acceptance speech, perhaps? Um, these next few awards are chosen in a very particular way. Um, they are argued over in the most passionate way by the jury. And I'm not a member of the jury. I'm just your host this evening. But I had the special pleasure of sitting in that room. And I may joke about the violence and the bloodshed. But genuinely, one of the most heartfelt and wonderful experiences of this weekend for me was watching how much the jury have championed your games, have enjoyed your games. And they want to highlight just a few of those games that um, they found particularly special. So the first one is the jury spotlight for academic excellence. And will be introduced by Clement Pirelli. Thank you, thank you. They were indeed not lying. I can't see shit. Um, so after a beer or two, I had a really good speech to the rest of the jury because I went to bat for this game. And by God, I do not remember it. <laughs> so you're going to have to do with this. Uh, so this award winner is a design monolith. No part is out of place. And every mechanic builds on the core of a well-oiled machine. The players enraptured and the gameplay flows. As an academic project, it embodies the aspirations of the entire education. As a game, it is both familiar and new. And we award the jury spotlight to Vesson. <laughs> In the room. Oh, there they are. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just want to start out thanking uh, the teachers allowing us to do pursue with this project, even though it might have been seen scary. Uh, just happy we were able to pursue it, and uh, yeah, we're super happy, happy uh, with the process we <laughs> managed to do and everything we learned from it, and uh, managed to make a fun game as well. <laughs> it was it felt really awesome. Uh, so yeah, thank you. Wonderful, very well done. This next jury spotlight is for another form of excellence. 
specifically for UX design excellence. And I'd like to welcome to the stage Jan Klen. <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. After we were finished deliberating all the winners, we noticed, wait a minute, there is this one particular game that really deserves an award as well. And this toy-like game that I'm talking about was so much fun to interact, it doesn't even need a goal. You could just throw me into that playground of a game world and I will have fun anyways. And everything in that game just played into that playfulness. The movement feels so good because of the intuitive physical contact with the controller and the fidelity of interactions that it enables. This gives the player a feeling of immense flow where you can just zone out and even forget that you're playing this game because it's just so intuitive and you're just so into it. And on top of all of that, there were so many thoughtful and amazing design decisions, astounding level design, great sound, and absolutely fun visual feedback with little particles and trails and fun little explosions that just all played into that toy aesthetic that we really liked. So without further ado, for Flipper Forest. <laughs> Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, I wasn't ready to do a speech. I wasn't ready to win a prize at all. Uh, my product owner kind of threw me under the bus here, making me do the speech. But uh, we worked really hard on this game. Uh, we're really glad that we were able to, you know, make people enjoy it and shit. Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Was that was that some that was some wonderful uh, hearty congratulations from the back there. Again, we cannot see shit. We have no idea what's going on up here. The last jury spotlight is for a particularly hard fought category. And again, it was a delight to watch the uh, arguments for this. And this jury spotlight for excellent in genre was beautifully argued for by Emily Rodin, who's going to present it now. Hi. Uh, so I don't know what everyone's talking about. The view is perfect from here. It's mostly smoke, but uh, so. Wow, the mind just goes blank when you go up here. But uh, so it's re really weird. I've been on this stage three times in two times being jury, giving out rewards. So this is my fourth time uh, in three juries, uh, which is really weird, but also very, very fun. As my first UGC was like 12 years ago, but this was the first time I had to include something I learned even before that, which was democratic organization and process to get these awards done which was very weird and took a long time. <laughs> um, but yeah, so with excellence in genre, we have to think about everything that makes games into games and everything that makes the games into what they are and when they break the mold of why that game is what it does. And not only did, did, did this game innovate on every aspect of what makes this game the game it is, it is also immediately marketable and immediately will find a big marketable position if they move it in that direction. And flu it fluidly merges several genres as well, which this show blew so many of the juries off their feet, basically. <laughs> so 
and it's detailed, it has a massive replayability, and we just thought it was great. Some people in the jury played it on their phone while we were discussing. Um, but without further ado, the winner of Excellence in Genre is... Walking Home Studios! First of all, uh, special thanks to, to Leo Vognum for the amazing soundtrack of the game. And then, of course, the absolute legend, godlike person, Carolyn Johansson, for the amazing concept art that drove the game forward. And thank you. For that whole, like, uh, we wanted to make a game that people would like playing, and uh, I hope people like playing this game. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my goodness! Wow, I've got one left, and I I hope you've noticed that occasionally, though we get things right up here, we try to do our best, there are occasionally moments of fuck up. Um, but we all work really, really hard. And one of the people who's been working especially hard today is our flower person. I, it's going to be my pleasure to thank everybody after the final award. Now, it's not your fault. There was a, there was a snafu before when we were, you know, counting. Because, of course, us educators, we like to be, you know, think of ourselves as high-minded people you know, with an intellect. And it turns out that we can do many things, but what we can't do is count to 13. Um, we ran out of flowers. And so I'm just going to invite our flower person to very, 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 very subtly Help yourself. <laughs> and, and to distract you, and to distract you while he goes about his fine, fine work, I shall adorn my hat once more. What a lovely arrangement. <laughs> Thank you very much. The last category. Carry on. Oh, hello. No, no, keep going. One more? No, you're good. You're good. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Highly professional behavior here on stage, everyone. And to speak of professional behavior, the last of these awards goes to Best in Show. The game that envelops all of the qualities that we've been talking about. Design, art, concept, feel especially. And to give this award, I'd be very happy to welcome up to the stage Morten Johansson. Thank you. Well, hello, everyone. It's so fun to be here, and it's so amazing to present this wonderful award. And we are nearing the end, so I'm once again taking this opportunity to thank uh, Visby, the students, the faculty, everyone who made this show so amazing. Thank you again.
And a special thanks to the jury. It's been mentioned before, but there has been some heated debates. Uh, there was a surprising amount of crying. Uh, I think at uh, some point someone got stabbed. Like, it wasn't a lot, but you know. We washed it off. Yeah, we washed it off. Uh, but we were able to uh, reach a decision uh, eventually. Uh, and I know we have, uh, we've been here a long time now, uh, so I'm not going to drone on. Uh, I know everyone wants to go party. Uh, so the nominees are... Yeah, a moderately interesting dungeon crawler. Corbin's Journal. Hugway. And Walking Home Studios. So how do you distill down a game to what's best? We were touching upon it. It's, you know, looking at everything, taking it together, making it a complete wholeness. And that's what this game did. It gave us a complete experience. It transported us to another world, a world that's interesting, addictive. It made us feel things. The team delivered fully on his promises, and they crafted something new entirely. This game was like a dream you never wanted to wake up from. It left us wanting more. For best in show, the winner is... Hugway! Thanks to everyone <laughs> uh, for enjoying our game, and uh, um, thanks to our uh, classmates who helping us testing our games, and thanks for the teachers who gave us a lot of uh, suggestions, and uh, thanks for all of you uh, gave us a lot of uh, very fantastic and uh, great suggestions and feedbacks. And thanks for our great team members. And we, we miss another member, but he, he is also great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, Hugwave. I doff my very, very large cap to you. I, I genuinely have aching cheeks right now. I really mean it. Standing there watching everybody celebrate each other, I am deeply emotional at the moment. I have wonderful grin on my face, tears that are about to leap from my eyes because this has been such a wonderful celebration. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. We were talking about how to say thanks. It's a tricky thing. An event like this is made up of so many people who are working behind the stage, and behind the scenes, and behind the conference halls. To name one or all of them would take either a long time or leave too many people out. But we think that you've seen each other. You've seen the people who are working diligently. And so we thought we'd ask you, the people who have been coming, to say thank you to those people as you join them in the party afterwards. And there's one other thank you that I wanted to say, which is to the wonderful designers and students. Your work is what we celebrated here today. It has been 
such a pleasure and such an honor to be able to experience that with you. Thank you for sharing your art. Thank you for sharing your creativity. And thank you, above all, for sharing it with all of us today. Thank you. So, <laughs> this is this awkward award thing. I'm now going to have to say thank you. What a wonderful time. Now, please exit and go and enjoy an amazing party. Have an amazing time. Thank you, GGC 2022. Thank you, everybody. Good night. <laughs>